1055, still refusing to stop. Eastbound on Garcia, approaching Weller. Orlando, Florida. A local bartender with a drinking problem tries to outrun cops just doing their job. Showing no signs of slowing down, this chase rips through town at over 90 miles per hour. With the suspect's car throwing sparks and swerving all over the road, the chances for a fatal accident increase with each passing second. Finally, with nothing but open road in front of them, the drunk spins out and loses control. It appears the danger is over. Suspect stop, 1020, Garcy, west of Weller. Goodbye, status. Stand by. But it isn't. Get out of the car, now! Freeze, right there, hands on the wheel, pal. Get him away from there, Mark, there's flames. All right, let's go. Come on out. Let's right, go, help money. me out, huh? Money. Help me out. Okay. Right over here. Find a little home there. The male cop is Officer Mark Osborne, a nine-year veteran of the police department. Dispatch, we're 1095, hey. suspect in custody. We need a signal 77 at this location, passenger car. And this is Officer Gwen Sullivan. She's been a cop for almost four years, and she's seen the worst her job has to offer. Well, until now. Is that Earl? Yep, that's Earl. Earl Woodley. He's a bartender well-known to most of the local cops. He used to work at their favorite watering hole. Oh, man. 10 Robert 32, do you need any additional units? Negative, 10 at this time. Jason and I have often wondered if working on this site has ruined us for the sane and rational part of the world and, and left us so primed for the bizarre and the unusual that we can find the supernatural in an outtake from some cheesy reality-based television show. The arrest had been made and the excitement was stick, over. Girl. Come on, Earl. He pukes, you're cleaning it up. <laughs> that wasn't until Officer Osborne was compelled to approach Earl's car. Mark? Mark, get away from there! He pukes, you're the cleaning question it up. is, <laughs> why? Did he see something? Freaks, it's you know who. Man, I got a doozy for you this time. It's all about uh, right, wrong, black, white, oh, and uh, blue, as in men in blue, thin blue line, and <laughs> my personal favorite, the blue wall of silence. That's the wall that you hit when Officer Friendly stops you for trying to break the land speed record on the highway, and all of your excuses are just falling on deaf ears. That's the wall. Anyway, uh, this, this particular story begins with a very similar scenario. Only, I don't think the cops that I'm talking about were ready for what happened next. But we need to go back about a week. To the morning I showed the group the death of Officer Osborne. Come on, D, I can see this on TV any day of the week. Wait, just wait. Now, this is where it gets bad. How bad? Bad, bad. Do I want to see this? No, no, I, I don't want to see it. <laughs> Where do you find this stuff, man? It finds me. Okay, okay, so what happens? What, the drunk gets one of their guns? You know, maybe we should eat No, first. no, no, maybe we should see what happens. Okay. Watch. He pukes, you're cleaning it up. <laughs> what is he looking at? He's looking at that. Oh, God. Mark? Mark, get away from there! Oh! Oh! oh. oh. <sighs> what happened to him? He was killed, burned alive. Yeah. Ooh, how about the woman? Well, the official record said that she was never in the car in the first place. What? She was there. She was. Or was she? It's a shadow. An optical illusion, trick of light, maybe. Or was it? Oh, man, that's, that's just freaky. Get away from that! We were looking around for answers in this auto graveyard where we tracked down the car that Osborne burned up in. 
We were looking around for clues. Anything that might lead us back to a ghost or the trick of light or whatever it was. I'm feeling some bad mojo here. Yeah, I feel it too, man. I hope you don't plan on exploiting this cop's last stand in front of friends and family. Nah, I'm just gonna do some before and after photos, you know? Kinda like those fat commercials. Hey, that's it right there, man. Officer Osborne's fiery tomb. You are gonna hide their identities, right? Look, I'm just asking because they might get a little irritated if it looks like we're, you know, profiting from tragedy. I'll be discreet. Sure. Whoa, 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 whoa. Turn off your light, man. Just want to get this light. No, just turn off your light, ah. man. Come on. Whoa. Wait. Where'd she go? I don't know. You didn't see where she went? No. Freeze! Turn around. Get down and empty your hands now. Okay. Shut up. Ow, all right, they're spread. What are you doing here? We're just looking around. The place is closed. You didn't notice the signs in the razor wire? No, I'm sorry. It slipped our minds, all right? We're just, we're looking for batteries. Get up. Get up. Get out of here. Get out of here now. Dude, you know who that was? Gwen Sullivan. She was Officer Osborne's partner. I've been a cop for almost four years. 29 years old, single, graduated 12th in her class from the academy. Nice work. You're lucky you didn't get shot. We also have to ask her some questions. Oh, yeah? Like what? Like, why she felt so compelled to occupy the vehicle that her partner died in. Uh, don't. Don't. Don't do that. Yeah, unless you want to get shot at. We also have to talk to the guy that they arrested. What was his name? Um, Earl Woodley. Yes. See if old Earl has ever seen anything staring back at him from the rearview mirror. He's out on bail right now, right? Okay, just stop. What? Now, see, that's how it all starts. You open your big mouth, and we all have to worry about getting arrested or put in jail. Come on, it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Not for me. Yeah. Me either. Well, you guys are doing something else, so... Hey, Cap. Maggie wanted me to tell you there's two women waiting to see you in your office. Thanks. Hey, Zydell, would you do us all a favor and change that aftershave? I'm sorry, but they want to follow me? It's a ride-along. It's a, a study. Um, we're with the Barnes Foundation. We're gathering information on women in high-stress professions. Well, I'm down in records. Not much stress there. Well, as of today, you're back on the street. Yes, sir. Would you ladies excuse us? Uh, Gwen will be right with you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What the hell are we doing here? What is the Barnes Foundation? They provide grants or something. I have the facts someplace here, but I want you to take it easy. Excuse me, sir, but I've been taking it easy for three weeks now. I'm ready to get back to work. Babysit him for half a day. Drive him around, let him ask questions. But unless Bonnie and Clyde is robbing a bank right in front of you, I want you to let the other guys roll on it. You've been through a lot. I don't want to put you under any more stress right now. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, let's go. Earl, wait up. We just got a few questions. Yeah, and you're not cops? No. Um, well, we're just curious bystanders. Curious about what? Your car. I don't have a car. You did. I'm not talking about that. Look, just one question, all right? No. Sorry. Is it haunted? What? Look, the cop, the guy, he, he, he thought that he saw... This. I think my car's haunted. What about me, huh? Maybe I'm haunted. You stop and think about that. That cop is dead. I'm sorry, Earl. I didn't mean you gotta go. Look, I'm not accusing you of anything. Well, I didn't do anything. He got in that car. You think I made that happen? All right, look, you, you saw the tape, right? Yeah, yeah, they made me watch it like a hundred times. And you saw the woman in the... Yeah, and she wasn't there. Everybody knows that it was just the light. Wait a second, you guys think he saw a ghost and, and then it ended up on tape? Yeah. What are you guys, nuts? I'm just considering all the possibilities right now. That's not a possibility. My car was fine. There's no dead woman in my past or my backseat. 
You should go talk to the cops. Well, I'm kind of on this unofficially right now. So go to an unofficial place, Chucky e. Green's Tavern. Why? It's a cops bar. Really? Go ask them if they believe in ghosts. You can't really do that because, you know, that's that's not professional. Well, it is professional for you, but not for me okay. right now because I'm working too. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Okay. Yeah, you know, maybe we can like go bowling or something one day. Yo, yeah. I, I gotta go. You, you beautiful though, you beautiful. So, what's your theory? Osborne screwed up. That's my theory. Saw something that wasn't there. You know, if these guys get the idea that you're digging for dirt on one of their fallen comrades, God help you. Why? What'd they do? Hey, Scotty. Sherry? Friends of yours? No. We're just ordering a sandwich. Mm. Normally take you 15 minutes to order? <laughs> Which one of you is Derek Barnes? Oh, uh, that would be him. Uh, ran your plates. I do that when I see someone who looks not quite right. Want to give me another beer? Sure. Anybody ever tell you you have a suspicious mind? Usually right before I arrest them. <laughs> Scott Hanover, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Ooh, what, what, what is this here? Now, what are you doing? Trying to find out what happened to Officer Osborne and see if it had anything to do with anything uh, supernatural, mm. you know? It's, this tape is police property. Hey, it's a matter of public record. You make it a public? No, we're just trying to find out what- The man is dead! So help me God, if this turns up somewhere on TV, on the net, anywhere, I'm coming straight before you. Know what I'm gonna say next? Let me guess. You know where I live? Very good. See you around. Two Robert 20, 1096 High Corner, Whitley and Harper. Um, what's a 1096 High? Jumper. Two Robert 20, 1060, 1076, Whitley. No lights and siren? We're back up. And sirens tend to make jumpers nervous. Anything to make you nervous? Not much. You don't, you don't ever worry about a high-speed chase or armed suspect or something? It's gonna happen, it'll happen. One of my best friends from the academy got shot six months ago. Is she all right? Coma. Her and three other officers got cornered. Car thieves opened up on them. Renee got a bullet in the skull. We now report a breaking news story coming in from the downtown area. It appears that an unidentified hey guys. man is threatening is to jump in a factory building located in the 6500 block. They turned it up. The sure, turn it up. Already on the scene, and an officer is up on the roof with the man. Is that Zydell? I've made mistakes too, buddy. I mean, everyone makes mistakes. We all make mistakes. Sometimes you just gotta let it go. You, uh, sometimes you just gotta put it behind you. Do you hear what I'm saying? It, it's not your fault. Y you didn't mean to do it. Sometimes terrible things happen and, and, it's, and it's no one's fault. It's no one's fault. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's okay. <laughs> nice.
Now, I've already talked about how working on this site prepares you for the strange and the unusual. But it doesn't always prepare you for something as real as watching a man take his own life. It's times like this that you crave the strange. It's, it helps make the world make more sense. It, it makes the crazy normal and the unreal real. Because the, the unthinkable, without it, all I got left is reality. Like that in my life. Hey man, you sure that's a good idea looking at that right now? Because Lon is really taking this hard. Man. Lon's got nothing but crowd here, man. Well, you want to see this guy smash down on the pavement? No, she didn't get that. Yeah, thank God. You know what? He saw something, man. That guy, he's Idel, whatever his name is. <laughs> and that's it right there. Come here, check this out. Right there. See that in between those two people? What? That right there. What is that? That's a woman. The one from the car? Wait, what are you doing? Check this out, man. Okay, she's there. And then you watch it and she disappears. Who is that? Move. <laughs> Is that the same face? Yeah. And I think these cops are in trouble. What? Something's tracking them down, man. Taking them out one by one. Lon, put that on a laptop for me, will you? Jason, yep. come with me. Well, where are we going now? You think ghosts are killing my officers? I know it sounds crazy. It does. Are you? <laughs> That's the face. I call that the those metal and kids face. It's usually worn by some bewildered sheriff or a rent the cop who's trying to keep his warehouse safe and his pension secure. You know, Jason and I, we, we've often thought of renaming the site copsdon'tbelieveus.com. Cops? They don't think off the cuff. They think with their cuffs. And, and the more Jason and I kept talking, the closer we got to wearing them. I know it sounds crazy. It does. Are you? No. Have you ever considered the possibility of hiring a psychic to help you solve one of your murder cases? What? O or ever toyed with the idea that something supernatural might ever occur? No. Well, we have been through a lot of things that make this seem not so far-fetched. Look, M Mr. Lieutenant, sir. Captain. Captain, you gotta believe us. There's a problem here. I have another officer dead. I have a widow with two kids. And I have a memorial to plan. Now, I know that you people mean well, but Miss, what is it Barnes? Yeah, Barnes. As in Barnes, the Barnes Foundation? Uh, yeah, um, look, about that, I, I, I needed my associates. Your associates? Yeah, <sighs> look, I, I apologize. I, 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 I did use a little bit of social engineering to get the information that I- You little bastard. We should go. Look, I'm, I'm just trying to find a connection here, okay? Derek, you lied to me, you little bastard. Sir, why am I a bastard now? You endangered public safety. I understand. I was just trying to save cops. Save yourself 30 days in jail and get the hell out of here right now. Point taken. So what now? Yo. Hey, I got something. How are you right now? You okay? I'm fine. Listen, Osborne and Zydell, they were both involved in a shootout six months ago. They stumbled into a chop shop situation and things went very bad. They killed three suspected car thieves. Yeah, Gwen Sullivan mentioned the shootout this morning. She said a friend of hers was shot in the head. Still alive, but in a coma. And there was another cop there. Who? Scott Hanover. Scott Hanover. The guy who took our tape, did he? Oh, that's Scott Hanover. Oh. Huh. All right, so what do we got right now? We got four cops, right? One's in a coma, and two are dead under strange circumstances. Now, am I the only one that sees a pattern here? You think somebody might want to warn this officer Hanover? That is a good idea. Warn Scott Hanover. Yeah, we'll do that. We will. Yeah. You guys go talk to Gwen, all right? We'll find out about that shootout. 
Why can't we get somebody else to warn her? Wait, ask her if the woman on the tape means anything to her. I don't think she's going to be too receptive. Hey, how about we go get Gwen and they get Hanno? Hey, how about no? And, and keep an eye out for the captain guy. He's a little down on the Barnes Foundation right now. Oh, well, that sucks. Wonderful. Let's go. I hate him, dude. And you know we're going to get our asses kicked, right? Yeah, well, I guess we're just going to have to make sure that doesn't happen, right? <laughs> Lady Cap. What was her name again? Renee. Right. Oh, right. Renee. She took a bullet. Yeah, we know. Man. If I ever ended up like that, I sure hope somebody would have the guts to pull the plug. You know what I mean? So what, what happened to her? Renee and her partner. Who was that? Osborne. A cop that got cooked last month. They uh, tailed a stolen car to this garage, and uh, Renee called for backup. Hanover and Zydell got there fast. Another cop friend of Renee's got there after. Who, who? Who was that? Cop named Gwen. Gwen Sullivan? Yeah, that's her. Yeah. After? Showed up after? What do, you, what do you mean by that? After the massacre, Renee, Osborne, Hanover, and Zydell walked into, like, a hail of gunfire, you know, as they say. Like an ambush? No, like a screw-up. Well, the word is they didn't announce, you know, like, this is the police, hands in the air. So these guys go in all cocky, you know, like John Schaff trying to make the drop. And uh, Renee gets shot, car thieves died, three of them. And the review board gave it like the good cop keeping seal of approval. So, what do I know all this for? Well, we think that whatever happened, uh, Osborne and Zydell might be connected to what happened that night. Yeah. So where is this, um... Chop, chop. Oh, there she is. The captain's pissed. We shouldn't talk to her here. Let's go. What are we doing? We're following her? Yeah. Chloe, we're tailing a cop? Sure, this is a good idea. Remember the last time we broke into a warehouse, we found a shadow dwelling, life force sucking vampire <laughs> parasite. <laughs> Man, ah! <laughs> yeah, so uh, all I'm saying is be careful. That's what I'm saying. All right. Man, I guess if you're gonna have a massacre, this would be as good a place as any to have one, right? Mm. Yo, Ooh. check this out. Oh! Bullet holes everywhere. Whoa. <laughs> 42 of them, at least. It's a lot of shooting. So what's your theory on this one, Mr. Detective? Well, you know what a siren is? Not the kind on top of a cop car. No, not the kind that goes woo, 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 but a beautiful woman that lures men to their deaths. Usually they're on some island somewhere singing, drawing sailors into the rocks, and then the sailors crash on the rocks, and then said sailors drown. Gotcha, gotcha, but this kind kills cops. Yes. This one lures cops into the back of burning cars, you know, makes him jump off of buildings. Ah, you, you know that's a bit crazy, right? Get about as crazy as a shadow-dwelling, life-sucking... Parasite. Yeah. True, true. Good, good, good point. So, uh, where do you think this one came from? Where did it get sent by? You got me. And why cops, right? Well, well, well. If it ain't the Hardy Boys. Jeez. Scott Hanover. <laughs> Again with the tape, guys. That, that's our equipment! Look, I know this is gonna sound really strange, but you gotta believe me. What? You're in a lot of trouble right now. Really? What kind of trouble? I don't know, but whatever it is, it started right here. And it centers around you, Osborne, and Zydell. And Renee Wright. Look, she wound up in the hospital, and you could be next. Okay, that's enough. Turn around. Whoa, what? Why? Because I'm a cop, and you're not. Now turn around. Okay, all right. Just. Do what he says, Jake. Just this is he stupid. Says. He's got a gun, bro. Oh, ah! 
Why are you doing this? Trying to help you. Trust me, this will help. Man, what's with the Rodney King beat down, man? Can you just Shut listen? Shut up. Just... What's that? It's her. Who? That's the ghost. Whatever it is, I, it, it's her. Um, hey. <clears throat> what are you doing here? Gwen, there's something you need to know. While Chloe and Lon were trying to break the lid off of this bizarre ghost story, Jason and I were trying to think through the unthinkable. In, in less than two days, two comps had taken their own life. What, was it a siren? I, I don't know. Could I prove it? No. Which isn't always the best place to be in when everybody around you wants one thing, the facts. All right, last time, she was here. What did the siren? The siren, the ghost, the spectral figure, you can call it whatever you want to. Call it the Grim Reaper, you know what, I really don't care. She was here, he saw her, and then he killed himself. Well, she made him do it somehow. He killed himself before he was about to kill you. Yes. And why would Officer Hanover be inclined to do that? What, kill us? Yeah. Look, we don't know. Listen, all we said to him was that there was some kind of link between him and the other cops who died. And, and Ghost Girl, right? Yeah. Right. Or maybe he was about to arrest you for breaking and entering. We found your bolt cutters over there. He interrupted you. What? He found you here after you broke in. I'm not sure I like where this is going. Well, I don't like where it's been. Gary, T, pick him up. Now, wait a second. Let's, let's talk about you this wait for a second, second okay? And, look, guys, don't worry about it. The cuffs, they're for murder suspects. Murder suspects? Look, we didn't kill anybody. Oh, I didn't right? say you did. But you listen to me. Hanover told us about the tape you have of Osborne's death. And the fact remains that two of your associates from the Barnes Foundation spent an entire day with Osborne's partner, and here you are now, and Hanover's dead. And you give me ghost stories. Now, I want answers before I get really irritated. Come out. There, right there. That's her, isn't it? It can't be. She hasn't moved. She hasn't left that room in six months. Have you ever heard of something called astral projection? What, like an out-of-body experience, you think? Well, what happened that night when Renee was shot? You want the official story? Why, there's an unofficial one? Always. Renee and Osborne tailed a suspected stolen car to what turned out to be a chop shop. Renee called for backup. Hanover and Zydell were closest. 
There were other units on the way, including me. They went in. Follow procedure and wait for tactical. No, we're going now. It'll be all right. Hanover and Zydell circled around one side. Renee and Osborne flanked them on the other. Let's go. in blind we knew these guys were dangerous they should have waited for tactical so you think the police lied in their report i think they left something out what the truth and now osborne and zydell are dead and you think renee is responsible we're not sure Oh my God. Our 15 minutes. Now, Jason and I, we did not get into this site to become famous. No, we, we leave that to, to politicians, VJs, and actors. We would like to just crawl into a hole and document our stories from there. But here we had this bizarre ghost story without a ghost. Uh, the, the, the woman in question, she wasn't even dead. It's her name, right? She's a cop. In a coma. She's the siren. We saw her and Gwen at the hospital. Oh, wait a second, wait. Coma cop is astral projector. Exactly. And killing of the cops? Yes. Why? We're not sure, but Gwen thinks it has something to do with the night that Renee was shot. She thinks that there's a cover-up. What kind of cover-up? Well, that we don't know. Gwen's not sure. But it would have to be something bad. I mean, bad enough for Renee to take the law into her own hands. Listen, call my dad. He's got connections with the DA's office here. I mean, he checked us for gunshot residue, and it's definitely going to come up negative, so. OK, well, you guys just hang tight. Step back. Step back. Hey, wait a second. What are you doing? Oh, my God. Wait, this is going to hurt a little. What are you doing? Hey! Oh Somebody help us in here! I can't get away with this. Chloe! Oh. You're insane! Hey! Get out of here! Oh. All right, oh, rest these two. God. What? All right, they tried to break them out. No, Chloe. no, no, listen. Hey, Separate hey, them. hey, listen. Wait a phone second. Call. Listen. Listen. Crime and punishment. They usually go hand in hand, but it's not that easy this time, freaks. Chloe, Lon, Jason, and I, we, we were all stuck in jail, and we had no hope of getting out. It's like we were, we were on this sinking ship, and all we could do is sit back and pray that it writes itself. And, and at the same time, the one guy that's supposed to serve and protect is out there protecting himself and serving up everybody that gets in his way a death warrant. I'm sorry, I'm not allowed to. Ma'am, 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 she could be in serious danger. That's why they had her moved. A woman, a police officer, she requested Miss Wright be moved to another room. Okay, okay, there that's was... fine, that's fine. Where did they move her? Well, I don't know. I think it was upstairs. Thank you. You know that Kendall's a bad cop, right? Hey, come on. where are we going? Can you say jailhouse suicide? Next stop, separate cells, and I bet they let you keep your belt. More convenient to hang yourself. Hey, Chloe. Okay. Terrific. Derek, where are they taking us? Captain Kendall ordered us moved. To where? Do you know you're working for Satan? Where are we? 
doing going? Probably gonna dump us in the ocean. No. Attach center blocks to our cuffs. Ah, get off me. Guys, let's go. All right. Oh. They must have all been in on it. Yeah, including Kendall. What? How? I think I know what they were doing. Stealing cars, cutting them up for parts. They had a deal with the thieves. All of them except for Renee. She probably saw a stolen car, called for backup, and walked in totally unexpected for what came next. I mean, she caught them in the act. Kendall had to clean everything up. Yeah, but he's not finished. Renee's still in danger. She's safe. I had her moved, and I'm getting you guys out of here. Hold on, Mr. Sullivan, for questioning. Hey, Gwen, hold up for a second. Kendall knows. Get to the hospital. Where is she? Sixth floor, room 18. Captain Kendall wants you to wait for him in his office. Fine. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine. Dispatch, this is Kendall. I need a status on Officer Gwen Sullivan. Kendall, dispatch. Officer Sullivan is 1095 for your request. Be advised, suspects in Hanover shooting are 1098. Repeat, 1098 stolen transport van. I have the van. I'm at Valley View Hospital. Request at 1078. Suspects are armed and dangerous. I believe they're here to kill Officer Wright. That's a 10-4. Back up 1076, your location. Doctor. We need a doctor! Clean up some bitch, isn't it? You're on the take, aren't you? Stolen cars? You guys looking the other way for a fee? And Renee found out, so... <laughs> she was a good cop. But you killed her. Just like you killed Hanover. You try to kill me after escaping. No, they're not gonna believe you. They already do. Because I'm a good cop, too. Get your hands up over your head. We went out the door. First one to get out of step gets a bullet in the eye. Move! Move! Go, go, go. Ah. I want you 
all to make a run for it. Because I love a big finish. We're coming down. So she wakes up from her coma. Doesn't quite feel real? Well, let's talk about reality, freaks. Gunpowder on Scotty's hands proved that he killed himself, so Jason and I were cleared. All we had to do was pay for the lock that we broke. Five ninety-five. <laughs> As for uh, Captain Kendall, the official record says that he suffered a nervous breakdown and tried to kill Renee to cover up his own corruption. As for Osborne, um, Zydell, and Hanover, they all killed themselves out of guilt over the shooting of Renee. Now, Gwen Sullivan, she'll probably make Detective in like a year or two, and we will all live another day to tell more tales of the strange, the bizarre, and the unusual. So Renee's on her way to a full recovery right now, with no recollection of what she accomplished. She, she's a testament to what the human spirit can do when faced with a wall. Uh, her, her spirit left her body and kicked that wall down. It isn't my world, freaks. Barnes out.